Thank you very much. Good morning and thank you for joining us here at the H. Lee Denison Building. I'm proud to be joined uh, by uh, my colleague uh, who happens to lead the branch of government located across the street from here, uh, the presiding officer of the Suffolk County Legislature, uh, Rob Calarco. And um, you know, I really want to thank him for the great work that he has done, particularly, particularly on this issue uh, to bring us here today. Um, and of course, he'll be speaking in a few moments. Uh, we're also joined uh, by uh, members of the Campaign Finance Board uh, who are here, and we want to thank them for their service. Uh, these are individuals, uh, leaders in our community, our region, our state, and um, they have chosen to come forward to uh, engage in this critically important uh, part of our democracy. Um, and I want to thank them. Lisa Scott, the president, Suffolk County League of Women Voters. I've been in many debates that Lisa has overseen answering tough questions. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank Lisa for what she does uh, in supporting our democracy. We're also joined by former Suffolk County uh, Judge, uh, Judge John Toomey, Jack Toomey. Uh, he is a uh, Vietnam veteran, a combat veteran. Uh, he led the veterans court in this county as the first judge to do so and really set the standard um, for a court that has changed the lives of veterans. And he has helped to change the lives of, of many people in our county. He's also the recipient of a bronze star. So th those of you who know, uh, that is one of the highest uh, awards that uh, can be handed out by our uh, armed forces for valor. And uh, I want to thank him for his service to our country uh, as well. Adrian Fassett, the other board member, couldn't be here today, but I want to recognize him, uh, the Equal Economic Opportunity Council of Suffolk County, uh, the CEO. And uh, we appreciate uh, his service on the campaign finance board as well. So every day that I have been here, that I've been in this office, we have been championing reform. When I first came into office back in 2012, and uh, uh, my colleague, who wasn't the presiding officer then, was here um, and came in at that time uh, and was a partner in dealing with that crisis, we inherited a $500 million deficit in the wake of the Great Recession, required immediate and drastic action. And then, just a few later, years later, we'd eliminated that deficit by making tough decisions that not only helped right the ship, but protected taxpayers. We inherited a, a government that, in many ways, was dysfunctional uh, and broken. As many of you know and may remember, uh, earlier in the administration, I stood on the uh, steps of the district attorney's office after confronting corruption here and abuse of power, and literally said that this individual was running a criminal enterprise out of his office. Um, within the next couple of months, uh, there will be a sentencing in federal court uh, because of that corruption. We took on the challenge of reforming the civil service office in the county and had to battle to do that. And after a several month long review, we found that that critical office, which is essentially in charge of overseeing hiring, not only within county government, but hiring across the county, had virtually no diversity within that office, almost zero, the office in charge of hiring in this county. And we reformed there, and those reform efforts continue. And rather than kick the can down the road on a issue that threatens to undermine our economic potential and with the impacts from climate change threaten our very way of life, water quality. Working with our presiding officer and our partners in the legislature, we took that issue head on, declaring nitrogen as public water enemy number one. Since then, just last week, we announced an investment of more than $100 million uh, in water quality, new investment in water quality infrastructure, and we're fighting for additional 
federal infrastructure dollars in the bill that is happening in Washington uh, so that we can continue the progress in reversing decades of decline in our water quality. And for years, people have heard me here, but uh, for years going back even prior to my, my life in elected office, I have pushed for uh, the idea of campaign finance reform. It is a system that we currently have that too often benefits incumbents who are in power, helping them to stay in power. And it makes at times it nearly impossible for the average person to put forth a viable campaign. The costs to run a campaign are high and continue to rise seemingly each year. Those who wish to seek office are reliant on this system. And unfortunately, access to wealth tends to serve as a gatekeeper of, of sorts to keep ordinary people from running for and winning office. And even more egregious is that the current system disproportionately and adversely impacts racial and economic diversity within the viable candidate pool, and especially that of women. And anyone who knows me has heard me say this over and over again, we need more women in politics. Uh, we would be in a far better place governmentally here and I think across the country if we had representation uh, of women in office, in power, that more reflected the reality in our nation. So today we have a long-awaited and exciting announcement after an exhaustive, and I will tell you nationwide, we interviewed and took applicants from across the nation, this board. I'm excited to announce the selection of Mercy Smith as the Executive Director of the Suffolk County Public Financing Program. Our program is the largest public campaign financing program in the state of New York out of New York City, the first suburban county in the state to move forward with such a program, to adopt such a program. And of course, you'll hear from Mercy also in a few moments. But before we do that, I want to thank the people who have been involved in this process. Again, um, a presiding officer, Rob Calarco, who offered the bill and shepherded it through uh, the legislature. Uh, we literally would not be here without his leadership. Thank you, Ron. Um, look, as elected officials, we have a, a shared goal and a responsibility to strengthen our democracy. That's now more important than ever before, where we have, have seen the, the notion of the peaceful transfer of power being brought into question for the first time really in American history. You know, I teach a class in state and local government, and for years I've talked about the election of 1800 and the transition of power from one party to another. Really the first time that that had taken place in, in human history. But one power, one party, peacefully turned over power to another. And that tradition has built and gained strength year after year, election cycle after election cycle, over two centuries. But we now live in a world, my kids will grow up in a world where we can't take that aspect of our democracy for granted anymore, as I always have. And I think that most of us have in, in America. So we all have a responsibility to do everything that we can to strengthen our democracy. Public, fina public financing programs open the door to a more responsive and representative government and help level the playing field for those who are not just personally wealthy or have access to wealth. Studies have shown that publicly funded elections not only empower ordinary citizens to run for office, but increase voter participation because we all have skin in the game. It is not a panacea. There will be money in politics moving forward, and, and likely there always will be. But what our nation has always been about is figuring out that balance in a complex society, in a diverse society with, with regional differences, where every race, religion, ethnicity that exists on this globe is part of 
the community of this nation. In that complex place, what we always need is balance. What this does, what campaign finance reform does, is to help level the playing field, help create balance in our system. And that's what we need. Reform is absolutely necessary. As I mentioned in the beginning, we have been battling for reform from the very beginning. And that has come with some cost. But we know what the cost of corruption is. We have seen it here. It far exceeds any amount that we may dedicate to helping strengthen our democracy through a campaign finance reform system. The cost of that corruption is far greater than these investments in our democracy. With that, proud to turn it over to my colleague and partner in government, our presiding officer, Rob Kalarko. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's really a delight to be able to be here for today's announcement. You know, when you work in local government, a lot of what we do is doesn't get to the heart of what our nation is. But the ability to put forward a program to create public financing for our campaigns gets to the heart of what our nation is, which is a democracy. And democracies are about competition at the end of the day. The competition of ideas, of people who have different perspectives on where our government needs to go. And they go out and they present those ideas to the voters and they abide by the will of the voters. And that's how we get our guiding direction, what we're going to do in government. It, that's how we empower the voters. But we don't have competition when we don't have competitive elections. When there aren't enough people who can raise the money to be competitive in a campaign, and I'll be honest, in Suffolk County, you're running in a competitive legislative race, you better have $100,000 to put towards that election. You're running for county executive, $2 million, $3 million easily in Suffolk County to run in a competitive election. And when you're not, you don't have candidates who can do that against an incumbent or even in an open seat, you don't actually get competition. The voters don't actually get a choice. They're stuck with whoever it is who's able to have the loudest voice. That's not what a democracy is supposed to be about. And I'm telling you this as somebody who has been in close elections and tough elections, I think the voters win. May not make my life easier when I gotta go out there and defend my record, but my record speaks for itself. I need to make sure that I have candidates who have the resources to compete. With public financing, candidates will be able to spend more time talking to the voters, talking about their ideas, talking about why they think they're the best person for that job, be it a county legislator or county executive. The voters are going to get a choice. They're going to get to win when that happens. And they'll get better government as a response. That's what's so fundamental about a program like this. So I'm so happy that we're able to pull it together. It was a, a battle to get it through the legislature. Uh, it's continuing to be a battle to maintain the support. Uh, but I am confident that when the program stands up, and when candidates have the opportunity to do it, and listen, money doesn't determine an election. Let me say that very clearly. Money does not determine an election. Ideas determine the election. But when you don't have enough money for people to know what your ideas are, you're not able to compete on that. And I am sure that once this is up and running, and Republican and Democratic candidates, or Working Families Party candidates, or Conservative candidates, or Independence Party candidates, or just somebody who has a good idea and they want to get out there and run without a, a major party line, they can go out there and they can show that they have grassroots support by meeting the qual minimum qualifications to get uh, into the program, that they will be able to compete and they'll be able, and you will see that both parties will embrace this program 
both parties will find that this is an opportunity for them to challenge incumbents and be able to make sure that government is held accountable to the people. So I, I want to applaud, first and foremost, the people who are really responsible for today, which is the board members of the Campaign Finance Board, and that's Lisa, uh, Lisa Scott, our chair, Jack Toomey, and Adrian Fassett, who I know is not able to be here with us today. They deserve the credit for getting us to today's point. They've been meeting for the last year, doing the hard work, and I look forward to Mercy, and I was speaking to Mercy a little bit earlier. This is our first time meeting each other, and she is telling me exactly the things that I have been thinking before, uh, before when I was putting this legislation together, when I was debating it on the floor. Uh, she is 100% gets what this is for, and I know that she's going to be our great first executive director. And let me tell you, when I've talked to folks across the country who've implemented similar programs, what they've all told me what was most fundamental to the program, getting off the ground, being successful, was the people that you had running it. And we have qualified, well-established people who are on the board, and now we're going to have an equally well-qualified, equally well-established person who's going to be our first executive director. So I am very proud that we are at this point today, and my only regret is that we're not going to have it up and running so I can take advantage of the program in my last race for Suffolk County Legislature. But thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you, Rob. Very well said, and uh, we can uh, uh, blame that on COVID. That's another thing that we can blame on the pandemic from happening. But uh, I think the presiding officer is absolutely correct, uh, and it's an important point. Uh, this is uh, my first time talking to, to Mercy as the executive director here. Now, Rob just meeting her. We, we did not select her. This board did, and that's very important. And what we have here and what is critical are, are individuals of, of great integrity um, who have done great things for our community, for our country, um, who are uh, making the decision about an executive director. And the presiding officer is absolutely correct when he says that the start of this, the people that you have involved, uh, making sure you're setting up the right, the right rules and the right standards, the highest um, standards of, of, of ethics, the best practices involved is absolutely important. And that's why I think we're, we're both ecstatic about the group of people that have been involved and very grateful for the dedication uh, that, that you have shown here. Um, the, the last point I'll, I'll make before I uh, turn it over to Mercy is Rob's final point, which is that the cost here, uh, which I was making uh, as well, the good government that will result from leveling the playing field is such a phenomenal investment. This will save taxpayers money. This will save the residents of this county money in good government. We have seen the cost of bad government. We have seen the cost of dysfunctional government. And it's simply not tolerable. We've seen the cost of corruption. This reform helps address that. And in that way, by raising the level of governance, by improving how we deliver services, how efficiently we do things, how we operate, this will result in better, more cost-effective government for all of us. With that, very proud to turn it over to the incoming executive director um, for the Campaign Finance Board, Mercy Smith. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ooh, it's definitely windy. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'd like to thank County Executive Ballone, uh, Presiding Officer Calarco, Assistant Director, uh, Deputy Director of Steve Randazzo, Majority Leader, Leader Susan Berland, members of the Budget Finance um, Committee, and uh, my esteemed colleagues and, and partners now on the Campaign Finance Board, Lisa Scott, Adrian Fassett, and Jack Toomey for entrusting me with um, this task of es establishing such an important and innovative office and uh, a much needed office. Um, 
I'm excited and ecstatic um, to breathe life into legislation that was enacted back in 2017, I'm sure Rob is as well, um, that was authored uh, by Rob, um, ha Legislator Hahn, Fleming, uh, Gregory and Spencer, with the purpose of really empowering citizens to get involved in local uh, government. Um, to eliminate government dysfunction, favoritism, um, as well as any type of corruption um, in support of really voter-owned electoral processes um, that's transparent and is supported by the public through uh, campaign finance programs such as this um, that supports equity and access um, as well as opportunity and the financial support that's, that's demonstrated and given through this program is not just for grassroots candidates, but also for incumbents. Um, and look forward to um, working with folks who really have the courage to have their voices heard um, on behalf of us as constituents of Suffolk County um, to challenge the status quo and to improve our lives on a daily basis um, for all residents in Suffolk County. Um, having held uh, leadership positions um, both in public and, and private entities um, as well as mature organizations and, and startups, I've dedicated the majority of my career um, to really maximizing um, the opportunity and access for students to higher education, um, removing the financial barriers, providing educational programming and outreach, um, and deploying emergence, emerging technology um, and streamlining applicant process to support compliance um, and transparency of state and federal regulations um, so that students could achieve their, uh, their really their dream of achieving a, a college degree. And I translate that experience um, to this new experience here. Most recently, um, over the past three years, I've served as Northport Village trustee I was appointed for the first year by Mayor Damon McMullen um, and subsequently had to run for re-election twice. Um, at the local level, folks may not, um, may not know this, um, but we're in charge of creating our own brand and our own logo and our own platform um, and are prohibited from actually associating with nationally recognized political parties, which means that as a candidate at the local capacity, you need to to essentially run on your merit. You need to work with our constituents and understand their needs, um, as well as uh, really understanding um, what they expect of you um, in your run on your merits and your accomplishments. And I think that that experience, coupled with my experience in higher education, really s propels me to a place where I can um, effectively and efficiently and with enthusiasm lead in the same capacity. Um, while I don't start this position officially until June, I thought that I would share with you a few thoughts on how I envision um, and define future success of, of this role as well as sustainability um, and my uh, basic launch strategy um, and initiatives. And the following benchmarks are really what I think are important um, to all of us. One is prioritizing voters over party or special interest groups, ensuring voter engagement and knowledge increases twofold, um, as well as participation, that all citizens have equal access and are empowered to run for office and compelled really to use this program. Um, that we remove the financial obstacles um, that Steve and Rob have talked about um, so that candidates can really focus on understanding and serving the needs of Suffolk County residents. Um, and that we provide a targeted and meaningful um, educational programming, not just for voters, but also for candidates, um, and incorporate that to support all stakeholders. Um, it's extremely important to me um, that the application processing, the funding, and the report, um, the reporting is online, that it's easy, um, that it is simple and transparent, and ensures accountability and compliance for all. Um, and that eventually that we earn legislative uh, bi bipartisan support. 
And finally, that my ultimate goal is really to um, ensure that the util utilization rate and the demand um, outpaces and exceeds the available resources. Um, so with that, I, um, I thank everyone for this opportunity. Um, I woke up the, this morning feeling truly blessed. Um, it's not often in one's career that um, he or she can say that they've accepted a position where their avocation is actually their vocation. Um, but today is my day. Um, I'm tasked with optimizing the potential of um, future county executives and legislators um, and restoring voter confidence and faith in our electoral process um, and in government. And I look forward to serving a broader constituency in Suffolk County um, going forward and, and beginning in June. So I thank everybody so much for this opportunity. County Executive uh, Ballone, uh, Presiding Officer Colaco. Two things that weren't said today is the Campaign Finance Board really is to level the playing field. And as it is now, the only ones that really uh, benefit are the incumbents. And I think it's just noteworthy to point out that two incumbents, uh, County Executive Ballone and Presiding Officer Colaco, are the ones that push this. So they're actually pushing something that really is going to serve the people. It's going to serve good government, but may not necessarily serve themselves. Uh, it's been a, and I certainly I, I appreciate and thank both of you for your unselfish position on this. Uh, one person that's out here today, Steve Randazzo, has been with us from the beginning, and uh, he actually, it wasn't easy for him, and I, I think uh, he really deserves uh, our, our praise as a board uh, for helping us and piloting us through this. Uh, your work on this, Steve, was uh, absolutely appreciated, and uh, your guidance and counsel was uh, was really uh, what steered this ship uh, from the beginning to, to this uh, glorious day here today. I'm sure uh, my colleague, uh, Lisa Scott, who was really just a great person to have on the board uh, with myself, with Adrian, uh, she is definitely the lead person. I'm sure she has a, a few words to say to you. And if you don't mind, uh, yeah, the no, executive, I'll turn this over to Lisa. And uh, Lisa. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Calarco, Mr. Ballone, Judge Toomey, and of course, Mercy. Although COVID-related financial concerns delayed the hiring process for close to a year, as has been said, the CFB board, with the support of both the legislature and the county exec, is so proud to have finally brought on board such an exceptional executive director as Mercy Goodnose Smith. We promise her our commitment and support as she launches this vital and empowering program, making participation in government much more accessible in Suffolk County. Mercy's leadership will also honor the legacy of the late Lee Lutz, whose ethics, morals, and fairness led to his leadership of a very short-lived early attempt at campaign finance reform nearly 20 years ago. On behalf of our board, Adrian Fassett, the Honorable John Toomey and myself, welcome Mercy and thank you for your passion to reform campaign finance in Suffolk County. Thank you very much, Lisa and, and Judge and, and Mercy. Thank you for your uh, wonderful words. Uh, with that, happy to take any questions. Uh, yeah, I missed part of the question, comment on... Well, of course, they're disturbing, but uh, unfortunately for me, they're unsurprising. Um, you know, when I uh, talked before about uh, the corruption that we confronted here, I'm specifically talking about um, the battle with the district attorney's office here. And I came in to reform 
government. It's why I'm in government. It's not to keep things uh, as they are. And there are people here who are fighting to protect the status quo. Um, and unfortunately, the status quo here uh, was a, a corrupt, what I described as criminal enterprise, the power of which was centered in the district attorney's office. And what was reported in that article today is not surprising to me because I experienced it. I was targeted, people around me uh, were targeted and close to me um, in, in those similar ways. And, and I had a choice to make here, and that was either to leave or to stay and fight. I chose to fight. And we fought back against the corruption, uh, and ultimately we won. And because of that, we're in a position that we're in today to advance reforms in ways that this county has not seen before. Um, working together with the presiding officer here, we are making changes in government that have been long overdue for decades to change the way things work here, to make sure that we can say to the public that we are delivering government that is as efficient and effective as possible and that it is ethical, ethical governance. That's what this reform announcement is about today as well. It's not one thing that is going to change that. It is many things. And this is certainly one of those advances. And so that's why I'm proud to be standing with, with these individuals of integrity who are here, who are citizens, who are committed to doing the right thing. That work continues in Suffolk County.